Hello everyone, in this video I am going to show how to copy an excel file from one container to the another container using file path in the data set. In this video we are going to create a Azure data factory first and then we will create a link to the Azure storage blob and then we will create input and output data set. After that we will use copy activity in order to copy the file from input container to the output container. We have already covered the basics of data set and link in our first video. Just navigate to our uh, data factory playlist and just watch this first video. This will give you a clear idea about data set and link. If you are new to our channel, just click on subscribe. Let's get started with creating a data factory first. So on the search, just search for data factory and this is the one and click on create. And here in this pop-up, select the resource group if you have already or, or else you can use the option create new. And here select the region and I'm going to select South India. And then here provide a unique data factory name. It should be a, it should be globally unique. And on the next box, just select the version. Always it is recommended to go with the latest version which is V2. Here you can configure git or after creating the data factory also you can configure git. So in case if you are going to provide while creating you can provide it here. As of now I am going to configure it later. And here leave the rest of the tab as default. And if you want to provide some tags you can provide it over here. Then just proceed to review and create. Just click on create. After creation just click on go to resource. It will navigate you to the data factory and here you have an option to open the data factory studio just click on open so this is our data factory and on the top left side if you see there is a pencil icon and click on it here you can start working on the data factory let me show how to create a link to a storage account I have created a storage account which is this one. If you want to know about the steps of creating a storage account, I will be posting the video URL in the description as well. Under this storage account, I have created one input container which is this one. Under this, I have uploaded one file as well which is student data uh, which is in excel format. So let me show the data as well. So this is the data and I have uploaded this to our storage account. Let's get back to ADF. Under the manage option, you will have options to create a linked service. Under various option, you will have a linked service. Just click on create linked service. Under this, you can create linked service to Snowflake, Cosmos DB, to various uh, services. Under this, search for blob. So this is the one we, are, we need. Just select this and click on continue. Provide a nice name to it so that you can identify uh, the link with the name. I am going to provide as blob link. You can provide a description as well. And here you will have option to provide a, a integration runtime. We will see that in later video. And here either you can connect with account key or SAS token. So SAS token URL we have already explained in our video. I will be providing the URL as well. So in case if you are going with account key you have two options one with providing a connection string directly or you can save the access key in the keyword and you can provide the keyword details over here so as of now we are going with connection string so if you are selecting connection string you have two option one by selecting the subscription details so in the drop down it itself you can directly enter or you can enter it manually just provide the storage account name which is this one and next is storage account key and storage account key you can get from access key tab so just navigate to access keys under this just click on show keys and directly copy the key from here so storage account name and then with uh, the storage account key you should be able to connect let's paste the storage account key over here and then copy paste the storage account name from here which is ADF operation 
and after this you have a option to test the connection as well the connection is successful let me show the other option as well if you go by from subscription option from the drop down you can select the subscription name and the storage account name and that's it you can just click on test connection so either way you can do it if you scroll down you will have two options uh, for testing the connection one is to the linked service and another two is the file path in case if you have selected SAS URI and you have an option to generate SAS token to the container itself meaning like you can restrict your access to the uh, to the container level or at the file level as well so for that in order to test out the connection you can use this option to the container name and the directory so as of now I'm going with uh, to the linked service and connection is successful just click on create so now we have created a linked service to our blob and the next step is to create a data set to our blob just click on this author icon and here you have an option to create a data set so just click on this three dot and click on new data set here you have various option to uh, create a data set for various sources you can create a data set just select the blob and here for input we are going to select excel not csv since our file is in uh, excel format so just select excel and click on continue and provide a name to the data set so that we can identify easily which we'll is input blob data set and from the linked service uh, drop down select the link which we have created which is this one and here you have option to specify the container name directory name and the file name you can type it manually or you have a option to browse and select just click on this browse icon and here you can select the file and the container so I'm just selecting the file name as well see everything got populated now you need to specify the sheet name since we specified the file name also in the drop down it will show the list of sheets available in the Excel which is sheet 1 so which is this one it automatically uh, red and it is showing up here in the drop down in case if it is not showing in the drop down you can just click on this edit and you can type the value whatever you want so in case if you didn't specify the file name you can use this option and next is header in our file if you see the first row is the header part so while reading it should ignore uh, the top row it shouldn't consider the uh, header as a row so in order to do it just select first row as header and you can import the schema as well which means uh, what are the columns available which means it will read the header and it will consider this as columns so for that just select that option import from schema which will automatically read that file in case if you want to upload one more file in order to read the schema alone you can just select this option and click on ok so now we have created uh, a data set for our input container and then let's move this properties window aside now here if you see there is an option to preview the data since we have specified the file name as well we can preview this data just click on this so these are the data we have loaded into the Excel. just close this and under schema tab you will see the column names which is imported from the Excel. in case if it is not appearing here just click on import schema from here and if you want to provide some parameters you can use it as of now we are not going to provide it also make sure you uh, publish then and there because once you click on this refresh button everything will go off so make sure you click on publish so that everything will get saved now we are going to create one output container and one output data set just click on this icon to create a container and in the pop-up just type the container name I'm going to type as output container and here uh, it should be in small letters okay and here you have an option to select the access level since we are going to access with the uh, access key I'm going to give it as private now let's switch to our data factory so we are going to reuse the same link which we have created earlier and just click on this author icon 
so similarly in the same way as we did for the input container do the same just click on new data set and search for blob and select the blob here we are going to select csv because copy activity doesn't allow xls destination i don't know whether it is a bug or not we have selected input data set with format as excel but for output we are going to select the format as csv because copy activity is having some issue so just click on continue and here you can name your uh, data set so i am going to provide output data set and in the linked service as well select blob link and here we can select the container name so i am going to browse it so in order to select the output container and here we can check first row as header because we want our first row as a header in the output as well and import schema is optional either uh, you can prefer it as null or something like that it's okay you can leave it as anything and if you go to schema tab it will be null because we didn't select any specific file and click on publish to publish the changes we have created data set for our input and as well as output container now let us start creating a pipeline in this pipeline only we are going to add our activities so click on new pipeline let's name our pipeline so we can change the name of our pipeline once done just move this aside and this is our pipeline and here we can add our activity under move and transform you will find a copy data just drag and drop the activity to the pipeline area and here you will find option to rename your uh, activity initially it is copy data so i'm going to rename it and you can provide description as well and we have additional option to provide timeout so and we have retry option as well so in case of failure it will uh, kick start again so we can provide that as well under source tab we need to select the source which is our input container even though both are available you should select the proper one the appropriate one so we have created the input data set for input excel so select that so under this you will have various option file path type so for this video we are going to explain file path in the data set only in our next video we will see about prefix wildcard and list of files if you are selecting the file path type as file path in the data set make sure you specify the file name in the input data set itself so let me show where just maximize this and here if you see we have specified the file name in the data set so that is the reason why we have selected this option because we know the file name and the file path as well in the data set we have specified it over there in case if you don't know you can use wildcard option and here you have option to filter by the last modified time meaning like the file uploaded time in the container based upon it as well you can filter out and make sure you select the option recursively so in case if multiple files are there it will be copied and sync means destination here we need to select our output container and just select this drop down and if you notice here you will find the data set which we have created for csv only we don't have the excel data set but here in the source it will show both csv as well as excel so this is the reason we have selected csv for our output container and here copy behavior so this copy behavior i will post as a separate video you can find the url in the video description as well as of now we are not going to touch it and down below if you notice you can specify the file extension and i am going to set the format as .csv over here and now let's proceed for mapping tab under mapping just click on import schema so that it will import whatever the columns available in the input excel see here you can see uh, what are the columns mapped for the input as well as to the output so this is how the 
column mapping will look like you can even delete the unwanted column or you can change the mapping or you can even add a new mapping over here by using this option and our settings we are not going to do any changes so in case if you want logging you can just enable this option and that's it just click on the debug button in order to run our uh, azure data factory it will take few seconds for completion make sure you publish at regular interval so that your changes will get saved properly uh, this is still running it ran successfully and down below if you see you can monitor uh, whatever happened just click on this icon and here you can see how many files got copied and how many files got written so all the information you can see it over here now let's cross verify in our container so let's see whether files are there in the output container yeah after refresh the file is showing up now here but if you see the format it is like excel sx.csv so we are having some uh, naming issue over here the first half till excel sx is from the input file name meaning like along with the format also the file name gets copied and dot csv is the proper extension we need to remove xlsx from the file name let me show how to do it so we need to fix this in our data set only just click on the output data set and here provide the proper file name so i am going to specify as outstudent.csv since we didn't specify the file name over here we got some issue so that is the reason so yeah done now let's run our pipeline so this became disabled by now since we specified the file name explicitly and now run the debug button just click on this refresh button in order to see the latest progress yeah it got completed now let us go to our output container and click on refresh see the file is available here with the proper extension and file name just select this and download yeah so csv got downloaded let me open this the data looks good now so we have successfully copied file from the input container to the output container using a copy activity in our next video we will see various types such as prefix wildcard and list of files and after that we will see copy behavior as well Thank you for watching this video and I request you to subscribe my channel. Your subscription will motivate us to produce more video in better quality. Thank you. Bye-bye.